I'm going to win a match of Apex only using pistols, but I wanted to put my own spin on this challenge. I'm going to play by myself in trios until I get a win, proving once and for all, you can win with any weapon, no matter the meta. Here's the rules. I have to play a match completely solo, no loading in with teammates and then playing the match without them. As far as weapons go, any pistol counts. This includes the Wingman, the P2020, and the RE45. And if I fire any other weapon, I'm immediately disqualified from the challenge and have to begin from the beginning. I can play any legend and use their abilities. Now that you know the rules of this challenge, let's jump into it. Okay, so this match was really interesting. I dropped down and actually fucked up my drop right off the bat. I wasn't really sure how I was going to handle this challenge. I had never used something like the pistols in the game that much. My preference was always R301, Spitfire, Volt, you know, the typical stuff. But off the bat, I ended up with a P2020 and was moving along fairly well. Uh, I'm actually going to jump ahead here and show you some more of the stuff that I picked up before what happened in this match. So as you can see here, I ended up getting a good bit of attachments. The biggest problem that I kept having with this challenge was the fact that I couldn't keep myself with the same attachments from round to round. I couldn't guarantee that I was going to get a Skull Piercer or an Extended Mag or Digis, which surprisingly enough, I ended up getting a lot of Digi threats while I was playing. It seemed as though that the game knew that I was doing this challenge and was ready for me. This part was really funny in all honesty. I was running around because I had double back to artillery and on the way over, I ended up fighting this guy. I don't know. Seeming to be playing a whole nother game because he got rocked right off the bat. This was the end of the first match. I heard the Bloodhound ult go off, so I knew he was going to be pushing up quickly. And I just was trying to keep myself protected here as best that I could. The problem was that being that this challenge is solo and trios, I was constantly in a fight between trying to be aggressive while also keeping myself from getting down. Which, as you can see here, like, they started to push up multiple at the same time, and it started to go pretty rough very quickly. Ended up getting me, but that was just the first. This fight was very interesting, and I wanted to highlight it in this video. So... Being that I was playing solo in trios and only using pistols, the problem became a lot more of how can I manage fights. And as you can see at the start there, I ended up taking a couple shots at them and then taking the portal back through. I knew they were going and push me at this point because I had instigated the fight, but I knew that there were two of them at least, so I backed off and hid over here while they kind of spread out trying to look for me. As I was in this situation, I didn't know how many there were going to be, I just knew that I saw the Bloodhound ping there. So I pulled up, they both immediately turned to me and started firing. Uh, my wingman shots are lacking, I still need to practice those. but. Ultimately, I took out their squad and could move on to the next. Now, I had chosen to play Bangalore at the start of this challenge because I figured her abilities would be really good for 1v1s. The smoke is just super helpful when you're in a fight and need to back out quickly or if you need to block off a rotation for an enemy with the ult. But, as I kept going on in the matches, I started to realize more and more that her kit is really helpful for 1v1s, but it wasn't giving me the protection that I needed that ultimately became the focus when I was doing these fights. And once again, playing the ultimate teleport move of just ending that person and moving back, I was constantly trying to pull back and reset fights. So like there, I ended up actually trying to leave and see if they were going to follow. But I jumped back in 
and once I came out, Bangalore was ready to go, but she just ended up having a rough time. This Bloodhound, I feel bad for the kid. He ended up trying to ping me here, as you can see, and like, it just wasn't working out for him. He just couldn't get past the smoke. This fight was one that I really wanted to show with you guys. I think it really puts into perspective how important it is to kind of single out enemies when you're in a fight. Because there were two people up top that were shooting there. I made a point to back up here with the arc star going out. But once I saw that I cracked the one person's shields, I was ready to jump in. And as you can see, Bloodhound was ready to ping. This fight was very tricky because there were two of them. Bloodhound goes down right there, and this one was just going to be following me the entire time. I had to pop the smoke here, and because of the stuff with Bangalore and Caustic smoke particles getting decreased right now, I actually popped two because I wanted to guarantee that they wouldn't see me. And at the end of the day, she ended up getting rocked just like the rest. Now, by this point in the day, I actually ended up swapping to Gibby because I was looking at his abilities and comparing with him in Bangalore, I was like, his arm shield and dome shield were just too strong for me to give up. And the passive damage decrease that he has is just amazing for this stuff. And in the start here, I actually was running around in Elysium because the map swapped over to Olympus. Now, the big challenge on Olympus is the open space that you end up with. And if you notice at the beginning there, another squad actually landed with me. So I genuinely think that Elysium was where I really found my stride with this challenge. I found that Elysium was perfect for me finding things like skull piercers, wingmans, just the general works. And this fight actually ended up being pretty fun to get into. I knew I had a better understanding on movement up against them, and it just ended up working out in the end. So later on in the match, I actually was running into this compound and ended up in a weird situation. I still only had light ammo weapons, which wasn't my ideal setup. When I was doing this challenge, I really wanted to end up with a RE45 and a wingman because I knew at any point the wingman was a great single shot weapon and it still is extremely strong. But the RE45 is a really strong weapon to fill in when I get in close range. And being that's the only auto pistol in the game because the alternator wasn't allowed for this challenge, I was really excited that I was able to use some sort of automatic weapon. And now with this fight, it lasted a lot longer than it would have if I had a full squad. And the reason I say that is I ended up timing it after the fact and this fight lasted a full four minutes. And that's crazy to me because on Kings Canyon, you end up getting third partied a lot of the time. It feels like it happens with every fight. Whereas on Olympus, the problem doesn't come from third parties as much as fighting in the open. Where, as you can see, I got pinged by the Bloodhound here. I knew he was around and I wasn't sure where exactly until he started shooting. But I got into the fight and started to try and make it the little bit that I could work. I got that first down and was ready to back up. I knew I had to keep pushing up on them slowly, getting knocks or getting damage and pulling back. That's the biggest thing that I found with this challenge. Using only pistols isn't that big of a problem in itself, but having that added caveat of it needs to be solo ended up making this way tougher than I initially thought. And because of that, I ended up getting this clip. Now. This was the point that I realized that I could physically do this challenge. I knew that it was tough going into it, 
But once I ended up getting into this fight, I knew that this Pathfinder was fighting someone. I quickly got the swap on my shield and knocked him. But my biggest problem here was I didn't know where his team was. That is until I hit that arc star to kind of block the res as best as I could. I then jumped over and chunk dunked in on these motherfuckers, letting all of them know you don't fuck with Gibraltar. Now, this match was kind of rough. I had a match right before this that I knew was very close to being the finish of the challenge, but I didn't know what my plan was here. I kind of jumped in and was uh, dropping caustic treatment a lot of the time. It was either caustic, octane, or artillery on King's Canyon. And even though I was sticking with Gibby at this point, I knew that I had to change up the way I played, at least a little bit in order to make it work. I really wasn't ending up in a lot of fights. It felt like a lot of people were on the other side of the map for most of the game. And at this point, I was just fighting, trying to see what little bit I can do to knock this squad out. But they were held up in there like no tomorrow. I knew I needed to make some sort of play to save myself and ended up actually using this spot, which it feels as though a lot of people don't think about here when they're in Kings Canyon, especially for circles that end here. That door on the left can only be opened by Watson or Caustic, but you can still get into this central room and kind of hold up there for a minute. And that's what I did. I kind of just sat there and got my heels off and was waiting to try and hear. And I'm speeding this up here a little bit. It was mostly me just trying to wait and figure out what the fight was going to be in this final circle because it was me up against two other squads. And I knew for a fact that I couldn't take a 3v1 by myself. That was the biggest thing that I think played a factor in this challenge was the fact that I couldn't just push into enemies without thinking about it. I had to be methodical and think about which fights I was going to take. Ultimately, I think that was a big reason why this challenge was so hard and why it ended up being so rewarding at the end. You see this airstrike come in and I had my ult ready. I heard them fighting and I knew I needed to make a play here. So, I ended up calling my own ult in, getting the one knock. At this point, I didn't know if there was someone behind me still or in front of me because of the two squads. I had knocked the one out when I ended up getting that first kill and thirsted this guy. So at this point, I knew it was a 2v1. I had to figure out how to separate them enough to get one knock or both of them damaged just enough so I can push in. I had the high ground here, which was super important to this fight because I was able to get a better angle on them than anyone else. And at that point, I had the single knock on the side and it was just the last one for the final kill. And I ended up getting the kill and finishing the match, winning the challenge. Here's what I learned from this challenge. I saw a lot of people complaining about the balance and the weapons of Apex Legends. And whenever there's a new change to a legend or a weapon, I always hear people complain about it, saying that it's garbage. But having a lower damage doesn't make it useless. If you have the game sense, you can win any match, no matter what gear you have. This challenge was insanely tough, but in the end, I proved that anyone can win a match of Apex, no matter your loadout. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing to stay up to date anytime I post a new video. It really helps me out and lets me know you want to see more stuff like this. I had a lot of fun working on this video, and I'm super excited to do more stuff like this in the future. And that's all for me. Peace.